Canada could be a leader in nuclear fusion technology, says the CBC. You've probably heard the word nuclear fusion buzzed around here and there, and there are probably many of you watching who probably have a better grasp of this technology than I do. So I want to provide a very <laughs> layman's idea of what nuclear fusion technology is. And I'm going to give you that by directly quoting this report. So, quote, fusion harnesses energy by replicating the same process that occurs in the sun. Hydrogen atoms are heated to extreme temperatures and forged together to create helium, releasing a lot of energy that can theoretically be used to power a grid. Scientists, engineers, and technologists around the world have been trying to figure out exactly how to make fusion technology a reality. However, no one yet has been able to make that happen in the most efficient way. And the company want, that wants to lead this endeavor is called General Fusion. They are a Burnaby-based company in BC. And they say that if the government invests $125 million over the next five years, that will put Canada in a very good position to not just know more and finally figure out how it all works, but to be able to train people, engineers and technologists and whatnot, who can know how to harness this technology, uh, who can build these facilities that are used to generate fusion technology, and even create a lot of jobs in the future. And this is particularly important considering that fossil fuels are becoming less and less viable as the years go by. This is true, of course, environmentally, but also market-wise. Um, there are several ports. Bloomberg said there could be an oil crash, market crash by as early as like 2022. Some are saying we should even expect a big oil crisis by 2018, which is next year. Now this is all speculation. We don't know when slash if this is gonna happen. But um, the financial industry is very worried about this, and the scientific community is obviously very worried about this, both for financial and environmental reasons. So I think this is pretty exciting. And since there are alternative energies out there, like solar, wind, there's still debate out there as to which form of alternative technology should be used to make up the bulk of the energy needed to pretty much power our massive cities and whatnot. And since a lot of the current alternative technologies at our disposal require very specific environments to maximize efficiency, solar, for example, requires sunlight for it to generate any power. Um, same thing with wind. You require, I guess, wind to create electricity. However, the interesting thing about nuclear fusion is you don't need any of that. You just need land to build a facility to generate this, I guess, energy. And the chief technologist at General Fusion says, quote, clean energy sources available just about anywhere in the world. You can extract it from water. It's something that we can build anywhere. Nuclear fusion could be the final piece of the puzzle when it comes to making the switch to clean and renewable energy. Fusion has the highest energy density, the best energy payback ratio, and the lowest carbon footprint of all energy sources. I want to jump back to the cost for just a moment. Now, some of you might be thinking that $125 million is a lot of money, and at face value it is. However, when we consider for a moment that the government today still continues to subsidize the fossil fuel industry to the tune of billions of dollars annually, $125 million over five years actually isn't that expensive. Any new industry requires subsidy to develop the, the technology, to create, I guess, more innovation, and all that's gonna compound over the years. And that was true of the oil industry as well. We take oil very much for granted. We kind of just think it's always been there and it's always been as efficient as it is. That's not true. Um, 
back like 50, 60 years ago, oil was a lot harder to extract. But through research, through development from the government and other corporations, we've been able to extract it in ways that minimize environmental degradation and maximize oil extraction. And going back, none of that would have happened if the government wasn't there to kind of plant the seeds. And over years, thinking long term, the government knew all these jobs are going to be created. And they were absolutely right. And the same is going to be true for nuclear fusion. And the CTO agrees that commercialization is going to be the most expensive phase of the nuclear fusion endeavor. And he's absolutely right. But thinking a little bit more long term, every source of energy, every infrastructure project is long term. Think of the most complex public transportation systems like the Paris metro system or the Moscow metro system. Those took time to build and they're subsidized by both the private market and the government. And today, they're very much cherished and there would be absolute public uproar if those things were taken away today. And the same is gonna be true for this. And it's also important to make clear that the 100 million or so that General Fusion is recommended to be spent on nuclear fusion technology isn't gonna to go to General Fusion itself. This money is gonna be spent at universities to research how nuclear fusion works to train people, to train graduates who are ready to, I guess, apply all their skills to this industry by 2030. And by the time they're finished, they can help help grow the industry in Canada and even the world. So there's obviously a huge opportunity here for Canada to become a leader in nuclear fusion the same way it became a leader in the oil industry so many decades ago. And it did that by investing in industry in training people and making sure that it maximized efficiency in generating oil. And the same thing is going to be true for generating this type of power. So I'm very excited to see how it turns out. I'm very excited to see if Canada is able to meet the challenges of grasping tomorrow's important technologies because our biggest competitors are already doing it. China's doing it. They're the leader in green energy. Europe's been doing it for a while. I don't see why we can't either, especially considering that the world is shifting away from fossil fuels, not just for environmental reasons, but also for market reasons, like we just touched on. But I thought this was a pretty interesting story. I was very much looking forward to creating this video and sharing this information with you all. Now, since this is, it's a pretty big topic and there are probably many of you who know far more about this than I do. So if you do, if you think I went over any critical details or if you're able to shed light on a lot of areas that maybe CBC or I didn't go over, please, I'd love to hear those things. And also your opinions. Do you think it's a good idea to pursue this form of technology or should we focus on geothermal or solar or wind or whatever i'd love to hear what you have to say about that but that's it for today thank you so much please like and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in this type of content and i'll catch you in the next one see you later